achieving success in his television sitcoms, he appeared in 150 stage productions, numerous television dramas, and some of the most important films of the 1960s. When one first saw him, that he was exceptional and different, in that he had a sort of manic, farcical talent. I think his great strength, uh, uh, his great success as an actor, was that he could, could adapt to practically anything. <laughs> irritated with people who he felt were not pulling their full weight and he I don't think he ever felt that with Francis. I'm afraid there's something of the Philistine about you Mr. Rigsby. It's very nice of you Mr. <laughs> and I thought well my gosh you know I don't know about the comedy but he's such a powerful figure that he'll be a wonderful Rigsby. Len met somebody who was comically as adroit as he was. Mr. Rigsby, you're talking wildly. Stop looking at me like that. I quite Miss Jones. So, so passionately. Well, it's how I feel, Miss Jones. Well, you shouldn't. He was always doing 25 hours in every 24. And one occasionally got a, bit, a little bit worried. He worked hard because he knew that he'd got to work hard because it's such a difficult profession anyway, but also he wasn't very good looking. He was never going to be um, a matinee idol. And I think it was just single-mindedness. You need a, a certain flair to be successful. You see, it's an art, yes, but not intellectual. It's more, more animalistic. But above all, you see, you, you must have three things. Intuition, cunning, instinct. I know he had this tremendous power tremendous uh, as a presence. I remember seeing him in uh, Steptoe's Son, where he played an escaped prisoner, again, very strong. And to come onto that show and almost overpower uh, Wilfred Bramble and Harry Corbett, it shows how strong he was. You had to watch the whole of him to get the full flavor of Len's acting style. It was superb, and I remember saying to Len, Len, that was fantastic. And he just looked at me and grinned and said, I've been doing it a long time, Harry. The ante room you're in. They close the door, you wait for the conversation to die down, you shoot your cuffs like that, and then you adjust them, leave it, just visible the diamond cufflinks when you're bitten to sit. Shall I sit? You sit. You come over, it's fingers on the trousers, up, down, to avoid any stiffness, just a casual throw of the leg over the side of the, with nonchalant ease, and there you are. That's it, right? You say out the door. People always accuse us in situations comedy of using canned laughter. We had to suppress the laughter on that show, you know, to keep it within reasonable bounds. He worked very hard, so consequently, everybody else worked very hard. The effort that he put into those shows was, was, was phenomenal. At the end of it, sometimes, the man was absolutely exhausted. It, it, it was the passion. That, that was there was, was, was frightening. He would be so wound up. I mean, it was like a sort of spring. I must say, you can be very plausible sometimes, very persuasive, Mr. Rigsby. <laughs> I don't know if it's the light, but you look strangely fascinating this evening. Although uh, the setting was absurd, it was rooted in a truth of a lonely man looking for love that gave it something more than just comedy. There was a pathos there, too. Yeah.